So, ladies and gentlemen, Lee Brody. Okay. Um, thanks for the introduction. Yes, I'm American, so you have to put up with my accent for 10 minutes only, I swear. Um, so, I'm talking about obesity, clearly. American fitting, yeah, I know. So, what is obesity exactly? I've got some very exciting photos to show you how obesity is represented in Armenia. Have some heavier people, I think this is a true evolution of how we've gone, and a very cute baby that represents a potentially uh, obese life ahead. So, uh, what is obesity actually? Um, obesity is, uh, is defined as abnormal or excess fat accumulation that might impair health. Um, it's a really big issue. Uh, the NHS reported that 26% of people in the UK are now obese. Um, the United States is very overweight. Um, we're actually overweight by 4 billion pounds, which is equivalent to 266,666 male African elephants, just to put that in perspective. But recently, Mexico actually surpassed American obesity rates, only by 1.2%, but they're still bigger now, so America is not the fattest country in the world anymore. <laughs> um, so what is the big deal? Why does it matter? So not all fat is bad, but excessive fat is really bad, and it affects every system inside your body. So mechanically, it's very stressful in your system. It's the same way if you carry a backpack that has 10 extra kilos and you take it off, you feel much better and lighter, and your joints are saying thank you for doing that. So it, it really suppresses the body. Um, internally, it affects every system. So when you eat a really large meal, you have a lot of lipids now um, having to deal with that. So in a normal fat cell, it takes in the fat that we eat, the beer, the food, but when they get too much, your fat cells basically say, nope, nope, not in here, no more. And it has to find somewhere else in your body to live. So that's when you have the problem where they start accumulating in places they shouldn't be, organs, around your arteries, etc. So, and then you also have some types of cancer. So the later stage of the diseases are cardiac arrest, type 2 diabetes, and these affect you for the rest of your life. So it's a very important thing to tackle. So how do we measure it? Um, everyone can get on a scale, but that doesn't actually tell you how fat you are, because everybody distributes fat differently. Some people have a little more here, a little more different areas. It doesn't actually mean you're fat. So fat stores in much different bits of your body, and some affect your systems worse. So the worst kind of fat is stored internally, in your belly, lining your organs, inside your organs, and this is the one you really want to fear. So the accurate way to measure that is by an MRI machine. I'm sure you're all familiar. So this is a machine that you get put in, and it can actually look at your organs independently and quantitate or measure how much fat is actually living in that organ. And that's the bad stuff, and that's the stuff that we look at to do. So how do we manage it? Surgery has been the most successful. People with gastric bypass bands um, have the best recovery rate. You see all the celebrities and people who get this bypass and banding, and they look pretty good. But it's very invasive. It's a lot to go through. So it's not a suggested for everybody. Exercise and dietary are the most suggested, so lifestyle changes. But it's very hard to study. And someone who is maybe involved in a clinical trial for a weight management or an obesity drug, you have the problem of this. Okay, did I eat a whole pizza for dinner tonight? Everyone here can say I did, but I'll never tell my doctor that because it's embarrassing. You don't want to get up and say, no, I haven't done any exercise except walk to the fridge. Yes, I did have a pack of candy and a beer for dinner last night. So it's really hard to pin down people to be honest about what they ate to see what the effect of drugs can do. So there's limitations. So pharmacology has had a really big advances with this. Um, specifically in my PhD, this is what I focused on. So I came from a nanoparticle background, so I designed nanoparticles for different things. And working in a metabolism lab, I thought, okay, this would be kind of cool, what do I do? How can I encapsulate something that would affect obesity in a positive way? Um, so everyone knows if you eat certain healthy types of diet, it's good for you. You get vitamins from them, you get a lot of beneficial effects, but then like what what actually is it that's helping us? So if you kind of break down a whole head of broccoli, like what is the important thing in there? And how can we actually just, can we just inject that into a person? Like why can't I just boil broccoli and inject that? You can't do that. You have a lot of things in your blood protecting you from that. So for that reason, I looked at potential delivery agents for some of these small molecules. Liposomes was the one I went for. For this study, I'll just say nanoparticle because it sounds a little better and doesn't confuse everyone, but there's a lot of different ways you can go about delivering certain small molecule agents. So what I did with this. So 
I thought it was quite fitting for this example. So this is a 3D printout of a liposome or a nanoparticle. And I'm just going to put this down. Oops, sorry. So take some peanut M&Ms that I probably cannot open. Oh, no, I can't open these. Right, OK. So take peanut M&Ms. These will be my small molecules. And if you pour them into my nanoparticle, you now have small molecules with some nice peanut butter M&Ms. Here, you can share these. Just don't drop it. It's really expensive. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. Right. So I stuck that inside. And then I deliver it to one of the most important organs in the system dealing with metabolism, the liver. Think Fantastic Voyage. I know this might be some little too old for people, but they shrunk these guys and sent them to some guy's brain tumor, clot, I don't know. Anyway, that's the kind of idea. So my PhD in one slide is I designed a nanoparticle that would encapsulate or stick inside these small molecules. That is not very easy, but it was an exciting adventure. So I did that. And then I did a bunch of testing to look at the distribution. So how does this drug particle behave in the system? So you look at, all right, where does it go? Where does it stick? Does it actually stay together? And when it gets there, where does the material go? Does it actually all get to where I want it to go? So that was about two years of work. And then I looked at animal models. OK, now I've got something. Let's see what it does. So I took um, a study where I made mice very fat. So I gave them a high fat diet. And then I tested this. So I injected these nanoparticles along with some controls. And I actually found that with this treatment, this treatment would be my nanoparticle group with the uh, small molecules, I actually was able to decrease liver fat. And this is measured by an MRI machine. So great, this looked really promising. Um, this is very exciting. And I also was able to decrease the fat deposits. So these two are the very important ones. I won't bore you with all the different types of fat depots there are, but these two are very pivotal to the visceral, the inside system. So that I spent another six months doing. And then the last six months of my PhD is what is going on? So as you can see from this map, metabolism is very, very difficult to do. So it was basically pinning the tail on the donkey and figure out where in this entire system I was working on. And unfortunately, I have no idea. I'm still working on it, and I have a few couple students in the lab who are trying to work on this. So, this pin the, <laughs> the tail on the donkey was my last part of my PhD, and that is where my talk ends. <laughs> Thank you very much.